moment, may I, I'd like to ask Margaret a question. Of course. Uh, one of the things that distinguished the last session was the omnibus budget bill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it was a budget that enveloped and embraced many, many issues which should not have been there, which should have been otherwise debated. Is there any way, without bringing down the government, to ensure that a budget is a budget and everything else is somewhere else? I think that's a very good question, and that's been something that really, you know, the journalists who cover Parliament Hill and the, and the goings-on of Ottawa, which uh, sometimes can seem like something inside the bubble where it doesn't really have relevance, parliamentary procedure, committee activities, to everyday, you know, ordinary Canadians' lives. But in fact, this, this is just an example of the Conservatives' tactical behaviour in really abusing every aspect of the parliamentary process in our parliamentary democracy. And I've had some discussions with uh, a number of uh, constituents who are really concerned about this. And there's a thought that we need to start creating like a Harper's Index, but literally on Stephen <laughs> Harper, not the magazine Harper, of all the instances where they abrogate the rules of committee, abrogate the, the, the traditions and the norms of Parliament, abrogate you know, the norms of preparing budget bills so that they aren't creating omnibus bills, uh, omnibus bills where they're throwing in there all sorts of legislation on crime bills and et cetera, et cetera, that have no business being in a budget bill. They should be debated independently in the House of Commons in an, on, the, on their own. And it's a cheap shot way to, to assemble an ideological agenda. That being said, any government has the right and the opportunity to prepare a budget in the way in which they feel fit. And it's up to the leader of the opposition and the opposition parties to gather up their you know, gumption and say, no, that's, uh, we're representing our constituents and the portion of the Canadian population that have, have elected us. And we feel strongly that um, they, uh, the budget should not pass. So anyway, Margaret, I see you. Hello. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. Hi. Well, actually, the question I was going to ask you is, if you compare the, the, the behavior and the, and the approach of this particular minority government, is it that different in fact, from the way that every other minority government has, has used that process? Um, Margaret, I would say that the having spent some time working on the Hill and been in a Hill office and doing some day-to-day -day legislative work, it's incredible the contempt for Parliament, the procedure, mm. traditions, um, the way in which, which may have been sloppy and lackadaisical and too easy. And maybe this is tightening it up and we all have to work harder to bring, you know, some sense of norm to it again. But it is incredible. You know, the, the type of... Uh, there's a lack well, no, of collegiality. But you're not answering the question. The question is, is this any different? I can't say, yes. you know, with definitively, is this any different? Because you'd have to go point to point, item to item, to see how the various issues are handled in committee, uh, you know, in the House, uh, budget bills, how they're evaluated, how they're prepared, how many omnibus bills, and what was the extent of other legislation in those omnibus bills versus current, you know, government's omnibus bills. And, that requires a fair amount of study, and, and definitely it's it's not fair to be superficial about that because it's very serious. But at the, at the same time, it's. it's Let me ask you, if I may, yes, please. Uh, a follow-up. Um, because you mentioned earlier that we were the Quebec was 